thing she set up in um, 93, so it's been going for quite a while, considering kind of how quite new a lot of this stuff is. Um, and Box Schemes, it was kind of one of the forerunners of Box Scheme, um, kind of community supported agriculture, so working with farmers, connecting farmers to people in the city. Um, started by Julie Brown in 93. Um, and after a little while, she kind of thought it would be nice to see how much could be grown in the city and so it would be ultra local. Mm -hmm. Not really wanting to compete with kind of small scale farms who we're supporting, but just doing some stuff um, locally, so get the community involved and in growing stuff and seeing how it's grown organically, um, that kind of thing. So started looking for different pieces of land around Hackney and kind of looking over fences and around corners and stuff and came up with one of the site in Clissold Park is actually our oldest site and it's, um, yeah that was about 97 um, and then found um, Oak Tree which then was taken um, down for development unfortunately and moved to Allens and the site here and all of them are in parks so we're kind of working with Hackney Council um, but what the aim of growing communities really is to try and find a viable alternative to the like current quite destructive food system which accounts for you know, over 30% of global emissions. So this is really on the front line of tackling climate change, I think. Um, and the urban market gardens, they started off, we started off growing quite a range of vegetables and just trialling different things, um, seeing what grew well here and in the soils that we have and stuff. Um, we kind of honed it down really to just be fun. It's not just as you'll see, but the main focus is actually salad. So we grow a, do a mixed salad bag. Um, and that's really important in terms of how we grow organically because you'd think it's a one product, um, but it's not. It's got many different um, families within it so we can still grow organically um, which is good and there's no monoculture it doesn't it really doesn't make sense for us to grow a big crop of potatoes and wait all year for them to be ready to harvest it would be much easier in terms of our work load but but actually it wouldn't it just doesn't make sense and doesn't really in terms of um, what our farmers and the farmers that we buy from do we, there's just no point in doing that so we really focus on salad yeah, um, what I'll do now is take you on a little tour of the site. Each site um, has the same elements of it. Um, all of them are really important in an organic system. What we really want to create is a system that works well with nature and that we don't have to use pests, um, pesticides or fertilizers. And, um, and so we create like um, a place that's attractive for beneficial insects and things that will predate on um, the pests that, that do come when you start growing things intensively. So if you have, I mean if you plant one or two plants, the pests are not going to be a problem if you've got a whole bed of it and it just you can just wipe it out. So There's six elements of the site. Um, there's the compost area, um, there's the kind of annual beds, perennials, area under cover, um, and pond area and the storage area. So I'll take you through all of those now. Um, and also, um, if you have any questions as I kind of babble on, then just stop me. Um, this is the compost area. It's um, one of the really important elements of the site. Um, everything we grow, and we don't use fertilizers, so compost is really essential. Um, in Hi, Lee. Hello. I just want to go through, Hermaine um, yeah. through there. Thank you. She'll give you a job to do. Um, yeah, it's a really important element of the site. Organic matter, building, putting organic matter into the soil is um, crucial for building the soil. Um, what we aim to do is um, feed the soil and not the plant. So we're really trying to create the perfect conditions for the plant to grow strongly in. Whereas um, uh, synthetic fertilizers and stuff are feeding the plant and not the soil. So they have a lovely sappy green growth and um, then that's really attractive to the pests and then they have to zap it with pesticides and it's just it's like this circle of inputs that they have to go in. So whereas we believe if you build the soil well then your plants will grow much stronger. And there's three bays here. This is the bay that you'll always be, be using that you'll put any 
matter from around the garden, any weeds that you take out or if we're taking out a crop, um, all of that goes into there. We also we mix in cardboard. The cardboard comes from the box scheme. So we have um, the box scheme at Grand Communities. All the veg and stuff comes um, in the boxes so we can use that. And we get a, a little bit of extra um, organic matter from the box scheme as well, things that don't quite make the grade and don't, don't get into the people's boxes. And um, that gets turned into this one. And you can see after a little time, it's got lots of lots of life in there, mm -hmm. doing their thing. Um, the worms are essential, um, and that's really broken down quite a lot. And then that gets turned into the third one. So, if you volunteer here, you might have the lucky job of mm -hmm. turning the compost, which is an incredibly it's quite a miraculous thing to see the breakdown, you know, from that all the way to to that here. Mm -hmm. And that gets sieved out. We have this sieve here that gets sieved out and put onto the beds every time we do a planting. How long does that take? Then? Takes about um, takes about six six months. Six months. Um, it takes less time when it's really hot, but we live in England, and so um, it doesn't get that hot. Um, much hotter in in summer. I mean, not hotter, much faster in the summer, um, and slower over the winter time. Um, and then in the fourth bay. We collect leaves um, from um, in autumn when they fall, and we use those as a really amazing kind of sustainable resource that we can um, use. We we um, collect it all up, and then once it's broken down, it takes about a year to break down into what's called leaf mould, and um, we use that, sieve that, and use that in our seed sowing compost. So that's that's a really good renewable source. And you don't mix it with the... And we don't mix it with that. The way it breaks down is slightly different as well. So um, if you just allow that to down with a bit of air, mix through, then it breaks down quite nicely. And I can show you the end product of that. You can see that's a really nice, fine, fine mix. <coughs> And that's really, it's a low nutrient, but it's, I mean, it's a good organic material that you can put into your soil to um, get the structure lighter um, and, and get more organic matter in there. But it's also perfect for sowing seeds into because it's very low nutrients mm -hmm. and seeds don't need um, high nutrient substance exactly. to germinate yeah. in because they've got everything they need within themselves. So you want to give them something to hold on to, but not not something that gives them um, too much growth. Do you grow them just in, in that or do you mix that with we mix, yeah, yeah, we, we mix, mix that. We do yeah. a mix with sand and... Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's that. And then we have the annual beds. few rules on the site just in terms of organic um, standards so you know not using pesticides not using fertilizers um, in, in terms of our own rules on the site apart from I mean well there's the obvious you know, treating each other with respect and stuff um, but there's it's really important that you just stick to the paths and um, we have raised beds for a number of reasons but one of them is that there's you know, lots of public access so people know where to walk and where the plants are growing. Um, but in terms of working here, um, the beds are what we think is pretty perfect size, width-wise. It's um, 1.2 meters wide, which allows you to work from the edge um, at all places within it. So you should be able to reach all parts. We don't stand on the beds at all, and that's because we follow no dig um, system here. So we don't we don't dig at all on the side. There's only one time, which I'll explain to you, maybe two times, that we dig. Um, but we believe that this, the soil, um, all the organisms down there, the ones we can see and can't see, have been developing over millennia to do the job of turning and um, working with the soil and creating good conditions for the roots. Um, and if you take a, a spade and you turn it upside down, it's like taking that flat and turning it on its head and then tell it to keep on going and do its thing, it's a bit, it's quite a disruption. 